Gormagat Kahirlock and uh, Minister, you're very welcome to the Shannon this morning and I want to commend you uh, for your role as Minister for Trade. You're doing tremendous work since taking office, um, building trade relations and um, expanding Ireland's uh, trade opportunities um, which bring employment. But this morning I want to talk to, uh, about the Intrio office on the Navan Road, which is a location that, and an office that serves people in the Dublin 7 area who find themselves without employment. And I have to say at the outset, Minister, while I welcome your presence here this morning, it is hugely disappointing that neither the Minister for Social Protection nor the Minister for the Office of Public Works uh, found time to come and address this issue this morning. Because the Intrio office for Dublin 7 is a very important office for those who need it. For those who find themselves having to turn to the state in a time of need. And that office was closed unannounced, unceremoniously, back in April. The staff, there was about 40, 50 people working there. That will reflect how busy the office is. No less than 10 community welfare officers. That will show you the type of need that there has that there is for, the, 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 for that office in that area. The staff have been re relocated to Parnell Street in the centre of town. And the clients, the people who actually went to that office on a daily and weekly basis, have been left with the option of going into town, dealing uh, with uh, queries uh, online, or dialing a phone number which goes unanswered. It just goes unanswered. Now we have a large elderly uh, community in, in Dublin 7. A lot of them aren't online. It isn't reasonable for them to be expected to either hang on a phone all day for no answer, tell them to go online, they, they don't have access, um, they're not uh, digitally literate, um, or truck into town to Parnell Street. Uh, there's very little parking in Parnell Street. The office, the Dublin 7 in Trio office on the Navan Road is one that had uh, parking actually could accommodate people who had uh, limited mobility, who do depend on a car or depend on a loved one uh, to bring them to the office. So Minister, what I was hoping to get today for the people of Dublin 7 was an answer from either the Minister for Social Protection or the Minister for the Office of Public Works who manages the building on a date for a reopening of that office. I hope they've sent you here with some good news for the people of Dublin 7 because I know from talking to people, from hearing to, from people on a daily basis, that it is creating great inconvenience uh, for them. But on top of the great inconvenience and the upset, it's actually a huge waste of state resources. That office is a brand new building and it's lying there vacant. And I don't understand why any department of the state would be leaving an office like that, lie vacant, unempty, and no date for uh, putting it back into productive use. So Minister, I hope they've sent you with some good news for the people of Dublin 7 and I look forward to your answer. Um, thank you, uh, Cahirlach, and uh, thank Senator Fitzpatrick for, for raising this issue uh, today and both uh, Minister, Minister Humphreys has sent her apologies and, uh, uh, that she couldn't be here today. Um, significant maintenance and upgrade work to the entry uh, centre on the Navan Road in Cabra Dublin 7 had, had been scheduled for 2022. Plans were put in place for staff to transfer to other entry centres for the duration of the work, with arrangements made for customers to be served by King's Inn entry centre, uh, Parnell Street. Uh, the work originally planned was premised on no significant changes being made to the services being provided by Navan Road Entrio Centre, the way those services are delivered and the layout of the building. Um, the Senator may be aware of the significant increase in construction and maintenance costs in recent months, or I'm sure she is aware of it, we all are, uh, including in building supplies. It was therefore decided before finalising the works contract to review the future use of the building at Navan Road to ensure efficient and effective use of resources. As, it, as has been the case with other organisations and services, many customers of the Department of Social Protection have moved to assessing departmental services online over the last two years. This has largely been in response to the social distancing implica implications brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic, and despite the fact that entry centres remained open to the public throughout the pandemic. 
This had reduced the footfall into Navan Road Centre, including a very significant decrease in the attendance of casual customers. A comprehensive review was undertaken in 2021 of all services and activities delivered by the Department's network of local offices, with the purpose of determining the best future operating models for delivering these services and activities. The review identified that significant portions of work that had previously taken place in the entry of centres had been moved to alternative work streams, with the most significant being the processing of payments by the National Processing Team and the handling of phone and electronic contacts by the National Intrio Centre Contact Centre. The review also identified substantial benefits for standardising and streamlining work previously replicated across different uh, local divisions. As a result of this review, dedicated work streams have been created for control operations, the community welfare service and employment operations, which includes activation, community employment, TUS, and employer engagement. The impact of these changes and the new redistribution of work has given an opportunity for the division of staff, those working in entry offices, to focus on vital customer service, customer facing services, front office services, information services, client identification, identity services, claim, claim maintenance, front office control, day to day branch office interactions, and facilities management. In terms of the layout of the department's entry or centres, this means that instead of large waiting areas with rows of seats and multiple hatches, the department will be providing self-service zones with interactive touch screens, child-friendly spaces and autism supportive sensory rooms. The layout will reflect the fact that many customers will be there by appointment and therefore won't need to queue. The work in the Navan Road entry or centre has been had been planned some time ago, and it was considered appropriate to pause the works while further consideration was given to the optimal use of the building. Now, that's the reply that I've been asked to, to share with you this morning, uh, Senator, but uh, I understand uh, your frustration in relation to 10 CWO officers working in the area in relation to phones not being answered, uh, and I can give you an assurance today that I will be uh, bringing back the points that you have raised very forcefully this morning uh, on behalf of your constituents and on behalf of the community that depends on the entry offices uh, to both uh, Minister Humphreys and uh, Minister uh, O'Donoghue. I think you know, uh, when anything is paused, and it creates a level of uncertainty, and that's not good, and I think we need to get certainty for the community in Dublin 7. I appreciate and I'm not going to shoot the messenger in this instance, um, but I have to say that that um, reply reveals a number of things. It reveals that this has been in planning for a very long time, and that planning did not include any form of consultation with the clients from the Dublin 7 in Trio office. In fact, it d demonstrates a complete disregard for the clients of the Intrio office uh, for the Dublin 7 area. Uh, it talks about a review. Did, the review, could it be published? Could we have uh, any visibility of that review? And it benefits, it benefits who? I don't see any benefit for people who are in need and who actually need some human understanding. That's what people who are in need need. They don't need online self-service portals. They need a bit of human compassion. And that's what people go to their community welfare officer for. And I think the day the state forgets what its role is for people in need is the day this state is finished. So, Minister, I'd like you to go back to the Minister for Social Protection and I would like you to ask her to meet with myself and a delegation from the Dublin 7 area to address this issue. And I would also like you to uh, go back to the Minister in the Office of Public Works and suggest to the Minister of Office of Public Works that he should stop wasting public infrastructure and public money in, in, in taking perfectly good functioning buildings and having them mothballed. It's a disgrace. Senator, and final item is... Um, th oh, sorry, th Senator. Um, thank sorry, sorry, Minister. Thank you, um, uh, Ciar Lucwell. Look, at, I, I know from my own dealings with my local NTO offices and dealing with my local uh, community welfare officers of the invaluable work uh, that they do, face-to-face uh, -face interactions, and quite often uh, they are there to reassure uh, people when they're in a particular uh, state of despair and in a particular... Uh, state of need. Uh, so it's important that that service is maintained. But it's also fair to recognise that more and more people are moving away to uh, 
um, online and interacting with state services online. That's just a matter of fact. Uh, but for those who are unable to interact uh, online, it is important that they should be able to access the services when they need them. Uh, you've made that point very forcefully. And I will go back, uh, as you have requested, um, to Minister Humphreys, Minister O'Donoghue, uh, in relation to the points that you've raised today.